Hey everyone, welcome back. It is Sunday night. Uh, welcome to our youth message once again. Uh, whether you are watching this in your home groups, watching it online, or you're watching it later in the week, uh, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. I'm excited to talk about what we're talking about today. Uh, so I'm just going to dive right into this. And uh, I hope you guys are doing well. And uh, I always love getting to do this together. So what we're talking about today is about the idea of unity and what that means in the church, what that means to God, and uh, what that means for us. So unity, probably you're thinking of something united. And here's how I want you to think about it. Have you ever had a uh, group project before where you know, you're assigned like three or four people to work with and uh, you ever had it? So you have someone working on this group project, the moment it's assigned and groups are assigned, they're out, right? Like they totally disappear. Uh, they're MIA, you can't text them, they're ghosting you. And then they just show up on the like presentation day and they're just like, I don't know what's going on, man. They're just hanging out. Uh, they And they get some credit like for doing nothing. You got the person who maybe does not understand the prompt from the very beginning to the very end. They just don't understand what's happening. So they're just kind of disengaged. And then you got the one who is doing every single piece of the work. They are studying, they're trying to get the group together. They're the ones presenting. They're doing everything, right? How many of you are that person? Or maybe you're the person who I'm out, I dipped. <laughs> but whoever you are, like thinking about how much of a pain it is when the group's not united, right? When you're not together on the project, when you're not going at it and everybody's separate. This is kind of like the church and that is for us as a whole, the community that is the body of Christ, right? Uh, we all have the same project. We all have the same goal we're going after but sometimes we all have different opinions of what that should look like or different ideas of what's important or we're just MIA totally lost. And that, uh, and that totally hinders us. See, together we're stronger. When we're united, this goal, this project that we're given uh, becomes something totally different. Another way to think about it is, you know, who's a fan of the Avengers? Are you into those movies? Um, I love them, I'm obsessed. I love Marvel, I love everything about it. Uh, but you know, the movies always have like, they're kind of doing their own thing. And what's the part that like sends it for us, right? Is the team up the moment they're all like in their poses, doing their thing. And it is incredible. And you're just like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be dope. They're gonna attack the dude and Thanos is going down. This is gonna be sick. Um, the team up moment when they're united in mission, when they're ready to go and they're taking it on. And see, Jesus wants us to be the same way. G that's God's plan for the church is to be united because then we have victory together. I want to take you to John chapter 17. And in John chapter 17, what happens here is Jesus is about to go onto the cross. He's about to give his life for us. And he has this time of prayer in the garden that he does. Now this prayer, he's praying for his disciples and he's praying for what's about to happen to him. And then he has this moment where he's praying over us, the people who all will believe because of the message and this is what he prays. This starts in verse 20. He says this, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. There's a lot of, sorry, there's something out there going off. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of different words happening in here. Up, down, you, me, you, me kind of wording, which can be a little confusing. But it's this last sentence I want you to focus on. It says, may they, us, experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. See, Jesus had this perfect unity with the Father. One, because he was fully man and fully God, and he was so connected to what God's will was and what God wanted for them. You see, this is what God had, and this is what he wants us to have with him, and we can have as the church and as people. We can have this perfect unity that Jesus wanted for us. There's a couple things that need to happen, though. The first thing is our minds must be completely united with Christ. You know, we've talked about the renewing of our minds. It's Romans 12, 2 that says, uh, may we be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can know what God's perfect will is. 
See, we want God to transform us. God wants to take our minds and set it and align it with what he wants to do. The same way that Jesus was. He wants us to be united and aligned with him. See, unity is not something we can have as the church together until it happens there. We have to be united with God's will and God's mission. We have to know what that is. So we pray and we seek him so that we are united with him. And then we must unite together as the body of Christ. This is uh, Philippians 2, verse 1 through 2. It asks, it asks this question. It says, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and one purpose. So if you have any of these things as the body, if you, in your faith, and even if these are things you're just desiring, if you want encouragement and belonging to Christ, there's comfort from Him. If you have fellowship with the Spirit, this unity with God, then make it complete and perfect by doing that with each other, loving one another and working together so that we have one mind and one purpose. So unity is powerful because it does a couple things. One, it's if you're struggling, being united with other people of faith will help carry you. It will find more encouragement and we'll find joy. We can celebrate things together. We can find more purpose. When you are down in the, in the ditches and are struggling, people can be there for you. When you are experiencing joy and celebrating, people can be there with you in that. Unity helps to carry us in those things. Then we can help carry others because we are united together. We can see when our friends or our family are going through it and we can show them the love of Christ in those situations and be there for them. And this is huge. Uh, being able to do this is a big, big deal. And then for our friends who don't believe, we can be the example. You see, we can be individually, they'll see that we are so united with Christ that there's something different about you. And then seeing how we're united together as a body of people, they'll say, wow, they are people who love each other, who care about others, and they are so united, they're so tight, that I want to know what this is all about. See, it's going to create something different. Not just by what you say, but how you live and how you care for those people. See, this is what God wants. And I think we're in a point in life for a lot of us and for what we see, there's a lot of division within the church. And I got to tell you, I believe that that's something the enemy wants to do in each of us and for all of us together. He wants to, one, make us have this tension with God, feeling like, oh, there's, there's something wrong here. And then also he wants us to feel like, man, there's something wrong with the church and with each other. There's too much we, dis we all disagree on. We can't possibly be united. And we have to fight that. We have to fight through that temptation. We have to fight through that challenge because God wants to do something powerful and amazing through us, through this unity. Through the power that he can show through us, God can do something incredible through us. So I want you to be encouraged in that today. And we're going to dive into our discussion and talk more about this, uh, this idea of unity. And I just want you to think about it in this way. That God has something special planned for you that can only be fully complete and realized when you are united with him and when we unite together. So how can we step up and say, okay, God, use us and I want us to be stronger than ever together. What ways can we do that? And that's what I want us to dive into uh, in our discussions. So let me pray for you, and then uh, we'll dive right in. Well, Father, I thank you for your desire for unity for us, God, that Jesus, you pray over us, that God, you are there with the Father advocating for us. And God, I just ask that you would reveal what you want to do in our lives, Lord. That you would reveal the plan you have for us, and God, that we would be more united than we've ever been before, God. That you would reveal your goodness and your passion and your love and your grace over us. And that we would be able to carry that together with one mind and one purpose and reveal that to others around us. So we give thanks for you, God. We love you. We thank you. And that's in Jesus' name.